Hey, this is Steve Halleck of TikToking, and I'm going to do a really cool review here of a very cool watch, one that's particularly special for me. Um, as always, please subscribe to the channel and check out my site, www.tiktoking.com, where I will have uh, some of the coolest watches in the world, uh, both for sale and uh, just written up and videoed, and I also do blog posts of things going on in the industry, so check me out. All right, here today I have the MBNF Horological Machine Number no. One, and this is the special edition in titanium. Um, this is a really cool piece. So for those of you who don't know my history, um, I actually helped uh, Max start MBNF North America, um, and so I worked with Max for several years, and we grew the brand here in the United States, in Mexico, and Canada. And um, so, it, you know, obviously it's a brand that is close to my heart and I know a lot about. And the whole reason that I, I worked with them in the first place, I was a collector before, and I just thought they were the coolest things in the world and I wanted to help out. Um, and here's a perfect example of, of the sort of coolness factor. So this was the first limited edition uh, HM1 that was made. And the HM1, let's get into the details of it at first. It, obviously it's the... Um, the launch piece for MBNF. Max wanted to make a statement. And here, the idea with the watch was it's two worlds colliding. So if you know MBNF, you know the concept is Max Busser and Friends. That's what the name stands for. And so here you have two worlds. You've got the world of Max and the world of the Friends colliding at a central heartbeat, basically. And the movement itself is constructed like a body. Um, you have, well, let me put a cloth underneath here. You've got basically the body, obviously, and then you've got the lungs. You have four winding barrels here, and they feed the energy in to the heart in the center, which is a central tourbillon. Um, so actually the main challenge with this piece was how to work the power delivery system. There's a 175 hour power reserve, which is obviously a lot. Um, and you would hope to have a lot out of these four barrels. And the idea was to have a very, very flat torque curve. So basically, um, you want the amount of energy that's going to the escapement to be as constant as possible throughout the power reserve. And the way that was achieved here is you've got basically like a central differential, like in a car. Um, you can see this big wheel here that connects all these um, mainsprings and feeds the power in very linearly so that you get the most ideal rate keeping. Um, and then of course you have the tourbillon in the center. Uh, the reason for the tourbillon actually was uh, because you had all the power coming into a central axis, it was um, it actually made sense in this case to use a, a tourbillon as you were going to have to have this centrally uh, mounted balance wheel anyway. Um, but it definitely looks cool and it adds some life to the dials. Um, the original HM1s had full dials, uh, printed dials, and for this special edition, uh, Max did this smoked glass dial, so you can see down to the movement itself, and then these sort of skeletonized um, hand hour markers. Uh, so on the original one you have printed, um, this is the hours and this is the minutes, but on this one it's this sort of skeletonized metal. Um, the uh, hands obviously go hours and minutes and it's actually a really easy watch to tell time on um, as long as you don't care about the sort of precise amount of minutes in there but you've just got your hours on this side and your minutes on that side um, and it's it's very simple otherwise so um, again for this special titanium edition you had the the clear dial which was the first time that was used later they did uh, a series of black PVD pieces and um, a gold, red gold piece also with the clear dial, but this titanium one is the first time it was done. And it was a limited edition of 10 pieces and they sold out pretty much immediately. Um, so they're really rare to find. And this one's in near perfect condition. Uh, it, it looks like it's been worn a little. There's like maybe a tiny scratch right there, but otherwise it's, it's pretty pristine. Um, and so let's check out the back a little bit. First of all, it's automatic, which is 
really impressive when you consider that you've got four winding barrels all the way over here. So somehow the power from this rotor has to power up all four of these barrels that are connected, which is a really difficult engineering challenge. Um, here you can see it's limited to 10 pieces. This is number two of 10. And um, the case is extremely light because it's titanium. Now, I, for any of you who are familiar with titanium, to get this sort of brushed satin finish and then the polished finish and these different finishes in titanium is incredibly difficult. Um, that's why you almost always see um, sort of uh, easily brushed titanium cases or um, lightly polished, but you, you very rarely see this sort of fine um, satinness. Uh, with these polished surfaces. So this case was extremely difficult to make um, and uh, that's probably part of the reason why only 10 were made. Um, but in terms of the HM1 variants, it's actually my favorite because the case is fairly big, obviously, although you'll see on the wrist, um, it's big this way and it's not that big this way, so it actually fits uh, smaller wrists okay. But um, the gold models can be a little bit heavy whereas this titanium one is deceptively light. Um, I wish you guys could sort of feel it through the screen. But let me show it to you on the wrist. This strap is extremely stiff, so it's a brand new strap and it's not gonna sit that great on my wrist, but let me do my best here. These straps take a while to break in and then they last pretty much forever. So, all right. You can see it comes on a deployant, this sort of spring-loaded uh, deployant, which is my favorite kind. And there you have the HM1. Now my wrist is not that big and you can see that it doesn't extend past my wrist on either side. It's just long, um, but you get used to it. And actually one of the things I love about this watch is uh, the construction of the case. It's so interesting three-dimensionally. So when it's on the wrist, you know, you're very rarely looking at someone's wrist straight down like this. You almost always catch some sort of really cool, unique angle on this watch. Um, and many people have commented that it looks uh, a lot better on someone else's wrist, they feel like, than on their own. Because on your own wrist, you're always looking like this. Um, but the reality is people in the world are looking at different angles and it always looks really cool. Um, so again, this is a really special watch, you know, MBNF has grown to be um, maybe the coolest and the most influential of, of all these independent brands. They're still making some of the coolest products in the world and, uh, and this is the, in my opinion, the best version of their original piece. Um, so I can, I can see these becoming uh, really important collector's pieces at some point. Um, and, and it's just a cool watch. It's a cool object, but, uh, especially historically within the watch industry, uh, I think these, uh, these, this is a really important piece to mark an era and the beginning of a new company that was going to sort of change, change the game a little bit. So that's it. This is the HM1 in titanium, limited edition of 10 pieces. Um, probably not going to see another one anywhere else. So enjoy.